Last time we were able to set up our profile fragment and now we're going to work on actually getting the information from the Firebase database and displaying it in the profile. So as you can see here we just have some kind of dummy information and I'm going to now populate this with real information. So we're going to go into a uh, profile fragment here and we need to set up our Firebase auth just like we do uh, normally in all of our other activities. So let's go into, I guess, I think home activity, probably home, nope, maybe home activity that have Firebase stuff. Yeah, so just copy all this Firebase stuff here. So it's going to be identical and we can close home activity, close home fragment and we'll go back into profile fragment and I'm going to paste the Firebase stuff down here at the bottom. And we can get rid of this check, uh, check current user. And uh, now we just need to get all of our Firebase stuff. So actually go back into home activity, go up to the top, and we're gonna copy this Firebase stuff here. And now we're gonna stick that in at the top here. And we're gonna need more, um, but let's get rid of this. And we can get rid of that. Okay, so we're gonna actually need a database, Firebase database, and also a Firebase database reference. So we can create those up here also. We can go uh, Firebase, oops, private, Firebase, database, and Firebase, database, and private, database, reference, my ref. And then go down into our Firebase, set up Firebase auth method here. We can do uh, m Firebase database equals Firebase database get instance, and then my ref equals Firebase database get reference. Okay, so that's all good. Now we need to create uh, an, an on value event listener for the database reference. So my ref dot add value event listener, new value event listener. And this is gonna allow us to actually get the data snapshot and either read or write data to the database. Just like we did when we registered a new user, we use the exact same method right here. So inside this method, this is going to get called as soon as the fragment inflates. So basically inside this method, method here on data change, we need to retrieve the user information from the database. So we can use a, a method for that basically. So we'll go uh, retrieve oops, user information from the database and a separate method we're going to use to retrieve all of the images for the user's profile. So remember before we had kind of this this grid down here. So we're going to need to retrieve all those images also, but that's going to be a separate method. So retrieve image oops images for the user in question. So we're going to create two different methods for that, and we're going to make them both in Firebase methods. So we go into our utils package, go to Firebase methods, and we can just scroll right down to the bottom, and we're going to create a new one, and it's going to be private. Uh, it's going to be user, it's going to return user account settings and it's just going to take the data snapshot. So get user account settings and we just need the data snapshot. Data snapshot. There we go. And we're just going to log it. So retrieving user account settings from Firebase. Cool. And so basically what this will do is retrieves the account settings for the user currently logged in. Database will be the user account settings node. So if we look at our Firebase database, that's going to be this node right here. So the user account settings node. So it contains all this information. Let's go back to the project here. Okay, let's get some more space. So first thing is uh, get our user account settings object. Let's just call it settings, new user accounts. Oops, user account settings. Actually, you know what? Because we, we're we gonna need a lot more than actually just the information that's stored in the user account settings. We're actually gonna need the information that's also stored in the user settings section right here. And looking at this, I just actually realized there's an error here. This right here, this username, this should be Mitch.Tavian, not Mitch Tavian. So that's an issue that we need to fix. So maybe before we proceed, I want to fix that really quick. And that actually is just going to be this section right here. So um, I need to check my user account settings model. 
So user account settings. And if we go, which one is the username right here? That's going to be the second to last field. So if we look in this method right here, this needs to be condensed. So you can see right here we condensed it like we should have, but we didn't do it right here. So that, that'll fix that issue. So now next time when we insert, uh, this username will have a decimal right there. So that's one issue done. And so now back to this. Um, so we're going to need to retrieve the information both from this node and from this node. So instead of doing two queries, why not just do it in one query? So we can create a, another custom data model to return here. Because basically what, what I'm going to do is create another model. I'm going to call it uh, user settings. And this model is going to hold a user and a user account settings model. So let's create that model. Just right click new class user settings and inside user settings we're just gonna have two fields uh, so private user user and private user account settings uh, user account settings actually we can just call it settings because this isn't actually going to be queried from the database so it doesn't matter what we put here this is just to help us um, actually retrieve data <clears throat> and return it to our fragment. So we'll copy this default constructor, delete that, delete that, and insert our getter and setter methods. And we can do a two string because why not? Okay, so that's done. We'll close that. And so now we have we have a data model for this, and that's what we're going to return. So now we can create our user model. So the user, user equals new user. And let's loop through the data snapshot. So for data snapshot ds, we do data snapshot dot get children. And so this loop is going to loop through all the main nodes as we've talked about before. That's going to loop through th just these two major nodes here, the user account settings node and the users node. That's the only two that it's going to loop through. So once we loop through those, we're going to try, we want to try and get inside of these nodes. So to do that, we can just write an if statement. So we can go if ds dot get key dot equals, and we can do uh, our get string method. So get string r dot string dot user. So we have our user account settings. That's our that's our user account settings node. So that would mean if the key, which is this right here, if the key equals user account settings, then we want to look inside that node. So that's what we're doing right here. And we print out the data snapshot just because why not? Data snapshot. Um, I always recommend printing out the data snapshot here just for debugging because if you ever have any problems, basically what you want to do is just keep printing out the data snapshot and seeing kind of what you're at because you're, you're definitely making a mistake, but you just need to figure out where the mistake is. And so just keep printing out the data snapshot and keep printing out the children to the data snapshot. Like if you wanted to take a look more, you, you know, put in user ID and take a look and see what you're getting and just try and figure it out that way. Uh, so anyway, so now we can add our settings. So settings dot set display name and ds dot child user ID uh, get value and this will be user account settings class oops class and get display name and then we want to do the next one so comma and it's going to be very similar so let's copy this and what's the next field oh whoops what am I doing? so we want to copy the whole thing here paste that and we're going to set username and this is going to be get username so it's exactly the same otherwise and then we copy it again and we can do set website get website and what else we got set description nope set description description set oh I spelled it wrong okay I'll need to fix that let's go into user account settings model Interesting. How did that happen? I must have deleted a character. Okay. Well, that's fixed now. There we go. Set description and then get description. 
And next one, what else we got? I don't know, posts, I guess, for profile photo. Set profile photo, get profile photo. Now let's do set posts, get posts, set followers, or set following, get following, set followers, get followers. I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that should be all of our uh, all of our fields that are required for that data model. Um, might want to run this in a try catch just in case the, we do get null fields, which is possible. If something goes wrong with our data insertions, or like if we look at the database right now, some of these fields are probably null. Like that might get interpreted as null. That might get interpreted as null. So it's gonna be good to catch those null pointer exceptions. So catch null pointer exception e, and then log e, and get our null pointer in there. You e got that message, and just gonna cut that. Put it there. So that should handle that null pointer, and let's tab all that in. Okay, and below the try catch now. So now um, we want to work on the next section. So this if statement handled for the user account setting node. Node. So now we want to do the other node. So I'm just going to copy that whole section right there and paste it in here. And we need to close the if statement. And so this is going to be users node. So we just want to change this to look for the users node and we'll print out the data, data snapshot just like we did before and now we're going to follow pretty much the exact same process so I'm going to copy that except this is going to be user and set oops user and set username and um, this is going to be user get username and I just want to make sure that it's still the same so we have the node the ID and then the object so that should be good we have the node, the ID, and then we set our object. So that should be okay. And now we're going to set uh, email, get email, and set phone number, get phone number, and set user ID, get user ID. Okay. So uh, maybe at the end of this too, let's just stick in a little log. So retrieved user account settings information and just do settings up to string and copy that. We're going to do the same thing with the user. So retrieved user information, do user to string. And so now we have our, we have our user, we have our, also our user account settings. So now we need to just return our custom data model. So let's find out where this thing actually closes, which is right down here. So we need to return uh, user, we need to return new user settings. And I believe the first parameter is user and the second one is user where's the, oh, settings. So that's it. So that's gonna return our custom data model, and that way we don't have to run this twice. It's gonna get our user account settings, and it's gonna get our, our user information, and we're gonna get that into our profile fragment, and then we can actually do something with it. But this video has been long enough, so I'm gonna get started on that in the next one.